With everything that's going on across the league right now and some of the trades that are being made, particularly for premium pitchers, is now perhaps the Marlins look to make a deal. I know their pitch in itself is already dinged up, but some guys look like they'll be back sooner rather than later. Should the Marlins leverage maybe the, the need that these teams have right now? The Yankees, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at the Yankees. Should the Marlins and Yankees get a deal done for one of these pitchers uh, and bring back a stunning prospect package for the Marlins? Tons to get into. This is Locked on Marlins. You are Locked on Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England and welcome to Locked on Marlins, your daily Marlins pod. I'm your host, Peter Pratt. Hit me up, of course, at Miami Marlins underscore UK. If you are listening to the pod, firstly, happy Friday. Thanks for making Locked on Marlins your first listen of the day. Reminder, this is your team every day. Hit subscribe if you are listening. Leave a review. Also, don't forget, and if you are watching on YouTube, you're already there. There is a YouTube channel as well, guys, for Locked on Marlins. It is called Locked on Marlins. Search it up. Find it, hit subscribe, and come and join me on YouTube as well. You get the graphics. You get, I guess, you get me <laughs> um, on a Friday morning. I'm off work today. So I have got my Friday started early. No work for me. Nowhere to be, really. One of those situations where I've got holiday days that need to be taken. I've got really nothing to do with them. So instead of uh, household chores, I said, ah, I need to go and hit a podcast. Tara was like, you've got yours. I was like, no, I've got pods. So anyway, I'm hitting this one early. Uh, I'm looking forward to this one. Um, there's been, there was, you know, I guess a backfield game yesterday. AJ Puck got taken deep, gave up some, I think his first runs of spring actually, uh, but it doesn't count towards his stats. But we didn't have a, an official spring game yesterday to kind of recap on. We do have a couple of games uh, on the docket for today. We've got the, the first or inaugural Marlins like prospects game going on through spring. Uh, they're taking on the Cardinals today. So, yeah, I'm interested to see how that one goes. Uh, equally, the Marlins, I guess, main spring roster has a game as well. So plenty of action going on today for the Marlins. Uh, who are the Marlins playing today later? I know Ryan Weathers is on the bump. Uh, they're also playing the Cardinals. So Ryan Weathers, Stephen Matz going for the, uh, for the fish against the Cardinals. So should be interesting. Plenty to watch. Plenty to in uh, enjoy, I guess, on a Friday evening for sure. This episode specifically, I've got, uh, you know, thinking about what's happening around the league and obviously the trade that happens, you know, Dylan Cease being traded from the White Sox to the Padres, like everyone predicted. This, it got me thinking because clearly the Marlins during, you know, the offseason were open to moving one of their starters. They're, you know, they were clearly prioritizing, you know, controllable young, controllable, kind of big league ready prospects, hitting guys predominantly, it seemed. Uh, obviously, the nearest we got to like any kind of names uh, was linked to the Orioles, uh, who ended up kind of pivoting and, and making a deal for, for Corbin Burns instead. Um, but, you know, that maybe that avenue closed. But as spring progresses, the interesting part now is like our teams may be willing to re-engage, come back to the table. And maybe their need or their desperation. And I think that's it at this point. Like, whether you'd see teams as truly desperate, I don't know. I, I don't think that's probably the right, right way of thinking about it. But, you know, as, as guys start to, you know, go down hurt, it changes your requirements. And so this, to me, feels like an evolving process for the fish. The reality is for the Marlins, though, and the backdrop of this is clearly they're dealing with, you know, pitching health. Sandy, we know about. but Yuri's not without issue. Uh, obviously, Eddie Cabrera, not without issue. Um, you know, so there's there's guys that have been impacted. Braxton Garrett, obviously, we already know about as well with his shoulder. So the Marlins are dealing with, with issues. Feels like they've got guys that have kind of stepped up and, and are available. So with that being said, like whether this is the right thing for the Marlins to do, I, I think if you are fundamentally, if your strategy, which it, apparently it was from Peter Bendix, during the off season was to move one of the starters to get back and fill a deficiency that you have in the offense. 
with that backdrop, the question I have is, is now a better time? Could now be a better time considering you've got guys are getting hurt in spring. Garrett Cole, I think, being one of, you know, the biggest recent examples where, you know, it's a little bit unclear and murky about what his future may be in 2024. But, you know, for the Yankees in a pretty much an all-in year with this Soto situation, for them to lose Cole for at least what seems to be two months, if not the whole year, we'll wait and see. You know, the Yankees at this point have to be thinking, we need to plug this gap. The Yankees also reported to be in on Dylan Cease. The Padres ended up swinging this deal. But all of a sudden, you look around and you see opportunity, your original strategy, and a, and a, and a way to maybe execute on that opportunity for Peter Bendix. So whilst from a Marlins pers perspective right now, it wouldn't be the optimal time because of those three guys dealing with stuff, plus Sandy. But I, I do look and think, if that's the strategy, can you sell into other teams' need, get back what you need for the long term? It wouldn't totally stun me if all of a sudden the Marlins did move one of their starters, even now, even with three slash four guys, you know, dealing with something. So the question is, is it the time, like, how much of an impact would it have on the Marlins right now if they were to trade, let's say, Trevor Rogers, who looks healthy, he's on his way back, multiple years of control, like all of a sudden Trevor Rogers' stock maybe is ascending. It'd be tough to maybe move like Eddie Cabrera at this point, Specifically, I know he's been talked about, but teams have called about Trevor Rogers, and maybe now is the time. He's healthy, teams have a need, and maybe, and because of his spring, his value may have increased. Maybe now's the time. Maybe it is. Another guy for me, and I've already mentioned him on this, uh, you know, the, these these pitching today. So that's why I mentioned him. Ryan Weathers. Ryan Weathers' stock at this point must be drastically higher than it was going into spring, right? Ryan Weathers. What I would say with Weathers at this point is, you know, he may not, he maybe doesn't have the big league pedigree that someone maybe like a Trevor Rogers would get. So if the Marlins are looking for, you know, the Yankees are coming in, the Yankees are going to look for a Cole replacement. It's not going to be Ryan Weathers. And so like, if that's the deal to be done with the Yankees, it's probably going to be more like Trevor Rogers or God forbid, Jesus Lozado that's going to fill that void for the Yankees. And if that's the way they go, it's going to bring back a significant return for the Marlins. So, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see. I do think that the Yankees would shoot high because to, it's, it's very difficult to replace Cole. And if the Marlins and Yankees are going to hook up on a deal, it's probably going to be Lozado or Trevor Rogers, in my opinion. Would the Yankees overpay? Maybe. We know the Tim Anderson situation. He's only committed for one year, one year deal. He's hoping to have a stonking season, thus would price himself out of remaining with the Marlins. So we'll circle back around and the Marlins will still have a need at shortstop, you know, come next year. So there's no reason why they couldn't make that move now. Get a guy that's maybe not quite big league ready. You know, a, a top prospect that could happily have another year developing in the minors or waiting in the wings if Tim Anderson doesn't work out for sure. I think it's a really intriguing time, really intriguing time because opportunity, the strategy was clear and the opportunity maybe now is growing for certain teams where they're dealing with injuries. They're in all in seasons. They've got issues with their pitching. The Marlins do too, but not to a long-term degree. I think that's the key thing here is Brax, Eddie, um, Yuri. Who else is hurt? Brax, Eddie, Yuri, I think they're the three guys, right? I know, I know Sandy as well. Who am I missing? It feels like everyone's down. But with these guys, like it doesn't feel like it's long term. And so, okay, you may have to muddle through the first month with a couple of bullpen games and a couple of Soriano and Hoeing specials. But long term, could this be the right moment to make that deal? It could be. Like as as the way things have trended for the Marlins, I've started, you know, you're thinking, well, great, they've got that health, they've got that depth, sorry. And we're going to need that depth for sure. But for other clubs that don't have that depth, that are all in, the Marlins maybe could sacrifice the first few weeks of the season with a couple of bullpen games sprinkled in to help the organization mid long term, short term as well. There's no reason why it couldn't be short term. And it's clear the Marlins, it's unsustainable, it feels, to 
have what seems to be, again, a significantly below par offense with a upside pitching staff. Like the, the balance needs to be slightly adjusted. And as we've seen with guys like Ryan Weathers ascending, with guys like Max Meyer, Trevor Rogers, you know, returning. And, you know, there's, there is depth there. There is. And so the Marlins, I think, do have an opportunity to move one of the guys. I feel they made that decision. They were talking about Lozado with the Orioles. They were talking about Eddie Cabrera with other teams. The Marlins aren't against it. And so I think for me, it's something to watch where teams' needs are increasing. The Marlins still have, by the kind of depth chart, tons of depth. They can move these guys. There's still deficiencies in the offense. If you can get a franchise altering stick into this organization with five plus years of control, I think the Marlins should entertain it, even if it impacts them in the first couple of weeks of this season specifically, because there's still time to make it back up. Let's um, let's hit the. We've got two ads. We've got two ads in the first segment. Then I also want to talk about some of the wider news uh, around. Well, I want to talk about Ryan Weathers, so that'll spill over. I also want to talk about some wider news around free agent signings and free agent non-signings, uh, which is pertained to J.D. Martinez, who is still available. He's hunting a two-year deal. Let's talk about whether that deal exists. And equally, I believe the Mets and Angels are in on J.D. Martinez. The Marlins are talking to him. Can they get a deal done? What feels like a perfect fit? Anyway, this episode is brought to you, firstly, by our good friends over at Robin Hood. Yes, sir. We got the graphics going for these guys which is great. So did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from another from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April 30. Get started on robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. All right, guys, this episode is also brought to you by our good friends, of course, over at FanDuel. So there's plenty of action here with FanDuel. You can say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, guys, back here with me, Peter Pratt, on Locked on Marlins, Friday, the 15th of March. We are creep. Hey, alert. We are less than two weeks away now from opening day. We are in the, what's that? That's 13 day countdown, 13 days to go until opening day. I've talked about already. Could the Marlins be considering a trade right now? Could they look to move one of their starting pitchers right now as teams start to get maybe desperate? Their needs change. I'm looking at you, New York Yankees. I'm also looking at the Milwaukee Brewers, by the way. Devin Williams looks like he's out for some period. You know, is there is there a deal that the Marlins would want to make, say, with those guys for Tanner Scott? I don't know. I think more, more likely at this point, the question is around the Marlins starting pitching. They talked about it in the offseason. They were looking to swing a deal. If the prospect return is good enough, I don't see why the Marlins wouldn't swing a deal now, even though we are less than two weeks away from opening day and we have multiple injuries in the rotation. Feels like those injuries are short term. For me, if the opportunity arises, no reason why the Marlins shouldn't pull the trigger on a starting pitcher trade 
for some stud impact prospects, offensive guys back. We've seen that with Dylan Cease this week. There's still moves to be made out here. The Yankees were in on Cease. There's still some free agents around, clearly. Question is, is do these clubs want to commit the type of money to like a Blake Snell at this point? Uh, who knows what happens with Snell? Nevertheless, speaking of free agents, Adam Duvall. Adam Duvall signs back with the Bravos. $3 million with the Braves for Adam Duvall. I heard Duvall's name mentioned by pretty much every organization that was thinking about maybe like a, an outfield depth dude, a DH dude. Like Duvall's just a solid, solid player that can play all of the outfield spots, has got some power. You know, he's kind of got everything you're looking for. And for the Bravos to get Duval back for three mil, one year, three mil, it feels like an absolute stunner of a deal. So I, I applaud the Bravos for that. The reason they're making this, this deal, by the way, the backdrop of this is they have been through some sort of money laundering campaign to acquire uh, uh, Jared Kalanick. Uh, that looks to be, the, you know, they've already pivoted in some ways, and of, you know, that the PR spin around Kalanick at this point is, uh, you know, OK, he's going to be in a platoon with Duval. There's a decent shot that Kalanick's an absolute bust. The Bravos have botched this one, but it would be one of the only botches the Bravos have made. And really, all they've lost out of it is, like, you know, some money laundering stuff they were doing and some, you know, they they, they took on a load of dough to get Kalanick. Um, if he doesn't work out, so be it. It's just money, right? And that's just the, the difference with the Braves and the Marlins. But really interesting, why does this matter to the, the, the Marlins? Is, well, fundamentally, the Marlins have a need for a similar dude to Adam Duvall, in my opinion. And for him to get a one-year, three million deal, I think is really interesting and really indicative of the market at this point for these guys that have, like, hung on. And, you know... At this point, a one-year three million. Like, who would have projected that for Adam Duvall going to this offseason? No one. No one. If it was going to be one year, it would be like what? Eight to tell? Eight to ten? One year three mil. I get it. Maybe Duval wanted to be back with the Braves. It's the third time he's been in the organization. Nevertheless, money talks, particularly when you're in this part of your career. And for me, this is again another indication of where this offseason is at. And you know, this. When I look at it, this offseason is exactly the type of offseason that clubs like the Marlins should be like praying for. They should be absolutely praying for these offseasons where, for whatever reason, the market operates in a way where guys aren't getting deals they were expecting, they're not being signed, whatever it might be. This creates tons of opportunity for the fish. And when I look at it, I find it pretty head scratching, to be honest with you, that the only major league deal that they've signed is Tim Anderson. They've signed one major league free agent. There's a couple of, you know, minor league with invites to spring or whatever that, that could become, you know, major leaguers, let's say. But in this market where guys are going like Ahmed Rosario for 1.5 mil, Gio Urshela for next to nothing, Adam Duvall for 3 million. It's the perfect environment for the Marlins and they haven't, for whatever reason, gone beyond Tim Anderson at 5 million. Tim Anderson at 5 million, by the way, great business in my opinion. So they should be applauded for making that happen. But this market has created many, many more opportunities for the Marlins than just one guy, Tim Anderson, on a one-year 5 million deal. Adam Duvall could have been a good fit. We saw what he did with the Marlins. We saw how he exited the Marlins. It's still murky on why that happened. Nevertheless, these are the guys that you really can move the needle, to be honest. I'm really interested to see J.D. Davis. What kind of value does he have? No one saw the value at circa 6, 7, whatever his arbitration number was. They could have claimed him and had him for free. I say for free, but no trade required, really. Um, they could have claimed him um, and, you know, took took on the, the final year of ARB. No one did. Uh, I think he's he's a good player. I think the Marlins could absolutely utilize J.D. Davis. I know there's talk about John Birdie shifting over to third base, but John Birdie, as the year gets going, John Birdie will be needed to be John Birdie. And that will mean that John Birdie will play some short, he'll play some second, he'll play some center, he'll play some left. Like, as soon as you get an injury, John Birdie will be thrust into action and then Jake Berger will be back at third base. 
I, I just look at this and think there's opportunities here for J.D. Davis. But equally, for me, the most obvious fit remains J.D. Martinez. So we're going to talk about J.D. Martinez and update everyone on where we're at with that one. Are the Marlins still talking to him? Don't know. Who is talking to him? We've got some reports. But fundamentally, with J.D. Martinez, I feel like there's still an opportunity here for the Marlins that they could leverage. So we'll talk about that real shortly. But before we do that, this episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Yes, sir. You tell it's a Friday. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as Fire TV Stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. And Fire TV has recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis highlights and more to keep up to date on the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Kim Ang specials. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked on Fire TV. Welcome back to Locked on Marlins. It's me, Peter Pratt, hitting it up on Friday, the 15th of March, less than two weeks away from opening day. Make sure you've hit subscribe everywhere. You know Locked on Marlins has got you covered right up to opening day and through the season, of course, and what could be a very, very fun season for the Marlins, in my opinion. The roster as currently constructed, looks to be a circa 500 club. Could go either way. Could go either way. Thinking about how you can move the needle offensively, because we saw it last year and we've seen it in spring. The offense, you know, it, it needs a little bit more juice. Jazz thinks it's stacked, by the way. Jazz talking on MLB Network, like, this lineup stacked. I get it. I get where Jazz is coming from, in theory. Um... But wouldn't this offense look a lot better if J.D. Martinez was in the lineup? The other interesting note, by the way, from Jazz, in that specifically, he kind of went through the lineup. Hey, we've got these guys. we got these guys. we got these guys. we got me. Da, 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 all these things. Not once did he mention the name Avisel Garcia. Rightly so, because <laughs> it's going to be tough to sell Avi without uh, a smirk on your face in many ways. But... J.D. Martinez remains available. He is still out there less than two weeks away from opening day. J.D. Martinez, he is a straight-up DH. That is it. Many organizations at this point, they already have a plan for that spot. Either A, they have a guy specifically that is you know, carrying a roster spot that will DH and be the primary DH, or they plan to do a Marlins, let's say, and cycle other guys into that spot and use it rotationally, let's say, or the carousel, the DH carousel, as it's now uh, coined. I don't know if anyone has ever used that language before, but I'm going to run with it, the DH carousel. So JD Martinez, at this point, let's not forget, he had a one-year deal with the Dodgers last year, was happy to sign with the Dodgers for 10 mil, likely because, well, he thought he could win. It was a good fit for him. He had a great year. He had a great year with the Dodgers. The Dodgers opportunity for him has closed. They've gone in a different direction. We're, two, we're less than two weeks away. How many organizations truly are looking at J.D. Martinez and thinking, this is the guy we need? We can legitimately carry this guy on the roster. That's the question. How many are there? I don't know. I don't know how many other organizations are thinking, we have a spot that can carry J.D. Martinez. And the fact that he doesn't play the outfield at all at the cost, the dollar cost maybe, that it will incur. From a Marlins perspective, when we look back to last year, they effectively had Soler as a full-time DH with a little bit of outfield. Like, So last year's roster construction was predominantly based on Soler DHing. 
So I believe this roster, the way it's constructed, particularly the bench guys, the versatility, that they could absolutely carry J.D. Martinez. I say carry, like J.D. Martinez would be the best hitter on the team. I know Arias has got his own talents, so, so has Jazz. Everyone's got their own talents, let's say, but J.D. Martinez would probably be the best like overall hitter. I mean, man, what a career he's had. And Greg Mish reporting he was seeking a two-year deal. J.D. Martinez with two weeks to go before opening day, there is no two-year deal available to him. There may be club options, you know, it, that may be available to him, potentially. Creative contracting, creative, uh, you know, I guess, loading of money, whatever it might be. But in my opinion, at this point, and again, this links to injuries. I don't think the the hitting side of things has been as impacted. And so like J.D. Martinez is maybe sitting there hoping that something happens and that creates his opportunity. Maybe hoping something happens is probably a little bit unfair, but you know what I'm saying? Like he's wondering if his, his opportunity increases because something else happens to one of the other guys in the other club. Right now, in my opinion, there's no two-year deal available for Martinez. And I think he's going to have to settle for a one-year deal. He, you know, he, he held on. He hasn't, got what he was hoping for. And now it's about, well, where do I want to sign a one-year deal? What's going to give him the opportunity to maybe come back to next offseason and sign a multi-year deal? The reality is for J.D. Martinez at this age that he may just have to go year to year for the rest of his career until he's no longer viable as a major league hitter. You know, he's at that age. He's in his late 30s, J.D. Martinez. This is the sunset portion of the career in the main. And so one year, year to year is probably what you should expect, and particularly in this current market, in this landscape. Like that's what we're seeing. We're seeing teams get younger. We're seeing more prospects. We're seeing them get cheaper in some ways. Like JD Martinez, that age, that profile is kind of, it's, you know, not really in favor right now. It isn't the trend. He's kind of, you know, He's a bit of an outlier. So with all that being said, why should the Marlins sign him? Well, the Marlins need offense. However you want to badge it with versatility and, you know, upside of guys, the Marlins need more offense. That's it. Straight up. J.D. Martinez gives this lineup a boost. No doubt. The lineup would look and, like Jazz thinks the lineup's stacked without J.D. Martinez. Imagine if J.D. Martinez is, is in the lineup as well. Boy, oh boy, Jazz would go, he'd be going bananas. He'd be going absolutely bananas for that. I still think that there's, considering the Marlins and Craig Mish reported that the Marlins were speaking to J.D. Martinez, that to me is a strong indicator of interest at this point. And I feel like if J.D. realizes that the two-year deal isn't there, What's going to be the most viable opportunity for him? What can the Marlins offer? And really, I think the Marlins can offer 450, 500 at-bats for J.D. Martinez from the DH spot next year, in my opinion. He can, we can also effectively offer a, a team coming off the postseason. So it's a competitive team. This isn't like, join, go and join the Rockies, pad your stats and see what happens in a team that's going to be putrid. It's going to be a team that's going to be fun. Jazz thinks it's stacked. You know, from J.D. Martinez's perspective, it isn't, you know, it isn't the Dodgers. The environment isn't going to be like playing in L.A., no doubt about it. Like, the reality is the ballpark has a bit of a negative impact. The actual, the fact that the ballpark is really half full has a negative impact in some ways, potentially. You know, we've, we've heard it reported before. Like, players aren't overly willing to come and join the Marlins unless they need to. Tim Anderson needed the Marlins. The Marlins needed Tim Anderson. At this point, in my opinion, we're approaching the phase of this offseason where J.D. Martinez needs the Marlins. And boy, oh boy, the Marlins badly need J.D. Martinez, in my opinion. I think there's a way to manage both Martinez hitting in the D.H. spot primarily, but equally a way to use the D.H. spot at times to carousel guys into it um, and get them off their feet. We're keeping the sticks in the lineup, maybe giving J.D. Martinez time off. Um, and, and the DH spot is a tricky one because Josh Bell, Reyes, Jake Berger, these guys are used to being in the game like every pitch, every inning. 
going to a DH role is quite a stark difference where you're effectively taking three to four just pinch hit situations. I mean, Arias could do it, no problem. But like Bell and Berger, you know, it, will it suit them? I don't know. The thing is, again, with Martinez, he he's proven it. He's an absolute stud uh, of a stick. He's been DHing now for years. He needs the Marlins. The Marlins need him. And I'm still holding out hope here that the Marlins can get a deal done. It makes so much sense. So much sense for the Marlins and J.D. Martinez to come together on this one. Like Tim Anderson and the Marlins, it was a no-brainer for both sides. And I feel, considering where we're at not right now, J.D. Martinez and the Marlins is a no-brainer. I know the Mets are talking to, the, to Martinez as well. Sounds like the Angels are. So, you know, this competition, in theory. But again, I don't think any of them are going for two years or more. It's going to come down to where does J.D. Martinez want to play? And do you want to play in Miami on a team that's just off a of postseason? Do you want to go to the Mets? And, you know, New York's a very different environment. Do you want to go and play with the Angels, who really aren't that competitive at this point? You know, for me, I look at it and think, what's the most attractive option here between the Marlins, the Mets, and the Angels? I know I'm a little bit biased. No, I'm, I'm very biased. But I honestly believe that the Marlins is the most attractive proposition out of those three. Let me know what you think. Guys, that's been Locked on Marlins for Friday, the 15th of March. A couple of games going on today. Looking forward to that. The prospects are being showcased uh, with this inaugural uh, spring prospect breakout game series, whatever this may be. Equally, Ryan Weathers is back on the bump looking to, if he hasn't already, solidify a rotation spot headed into opening week. Look forward to seeing you guys over the weekend. We'll have a bonus episode likely on Saturday. See you then.